Good morning. Let's see again the morning sun streaming in the window over there onto the bench. So as you can see there, I'm looking at the second hand portion of my Radiohead collection. Uh, Radiohead is a band I like a lot and I own pretty much uh, their entire discography, I think. We'll go through and see if it's true. Uh, but these are the ones that I purchased second hand uh, somewhere along the way. And as I was looking through these and thinking, Radiohead is a band where I have purchased almost every, not every album, but I'd say half, the, uh, one, two, three, four, five, about five or six of their albums at least twice. And in the case of OK Computer, three times. This is the third copy of OK Computer I've owned. Okay, so we'll go through uh, chronologically in terms of their release. First one here, Pablo Honey, which was their first album, 1993. Uh, I got that second hand for 50 cents about two years ago um, from a second hand charity shop. You can see there's a name written on there, Sophie. So Sophie, I have your album. Um, Pablo Honey is, a, is an okay album. It's, um, it's for me, it's by far the weakest of the Radiohead discography. I think most people would agree with that. However, uh, for some people, it's really the only one they know because it has the song Creep. And Creep is the, the, still, after, um, what, 20, 30 years, 30 some years of career, for some people, Creep is Radiohead. And that's the only Radiohead song they know. I first heard Radiohead with that song Creep, because it was included on a compilation I had. Um, the, one of the first CDs I bought was called The Trip, The Trip 2, which was a collection of um, alternative rock in the mid-90s. It was 1993, 4, 94, sorry, 1994. And uh, I had, you know, Smashing Pumpkins and um, Stone Temple Pilots, White Zombie, Tool, and it had... Radiohead song Creep and to be honest I, first time I heard it I didn't really like it and still now I don't really like it that song doesn't really appeal to me the album as a whole it's, it's not it's not a bad album at all it's got some okay songs and it's uh, I would say there's not really any bad songs on it um but it's a bit it's a bit uh straight ahead and not really much interesting to it um so uh we got was it stop whispering i mean there was a single um anyone can play guitar um i like that song rip chord number seven now they call this pablo honey apparently it's because um if you are a fan of the jerky boys uh, prank callers from the 1990s. One of the, their uh, prank calls, Frank Rizzo, refers to the person he's calling as uh, Pablo Honey. I think it was Frank Rizzo. No, maybe it was. So there's Frank Rizzo, Sol Rosenberg, and Jack Tours. Maybe it wasn't Frank Rizzo. One of the Jerky Boy characters used the phrase Pablo Honey. And they thought that was uh, memorable or funny or whatever. And there's the band. And it's the same lineup up until today, which is not that common, really, when you think about it. So you got in the middle, Tom York, vocalist, I think. Pretty sure he's the main songwriter. Um, sometimes guitarist. Phil Selway, drummer. Ed O'Brien, rhythm guitarist. Johnny Greenwood, lead guitarist. And his brother, Colin Greenwood, bass guitarist. And there they are in live flight. Looking quite um, psychedelic there. And some pictures of the lizards. Now this album, I think, yes, it was not produced by Nigel Godrich. Whereas every album after this was produced by Nigel Godrich from Ben's onwards. So this album wasn't produced by him. It was produced by Sean Slade, Paul Q, and 
Coldery. Well, because this is their first album, I've heard before that they felt uh, quite restricted in what they could do. They didn't really have the, um, what's the word? Because they hadn't had success pre previously, they couldn't really dictate terms to the, to the record label about what they wanted or didn't want. or And so, um, yeah, and this is put out by Parlophone which I think was a subsidiary of EMI. Yes, EMI. Okay, so that's their first album. Not a bad album, and uh, it's got a cracked case there, which is uh, unfortunately common with all of my collection. Second, after Pablo Honey, was The Benz, which was 95, I believe. And you can really hear the step up in quality and songwriting and um, and everything. This is this is a pretty good album. For yeah, I you you kind of when you look at Radiohead's career, you can really see steps and groupings of sounds. So um, and maybe it's just in my head. I put Pablo Honey and the Benz together, even though the Benz is a is a step musically ahead, and quality wise. But then um, I feel OK Computer was a pivot point between the Ben's Pablo Honey era and the Kid A Amnesia era. We'll talk about that in a moment, but just uh, looking at the Ben. So um, this is also Sophie's album. <laughs> so I got this at the same time uh, for 50 cents. So Sophie or Sophie's family got rid of her Radiohead collection. Bad choice, Sophie. Um, I've owned this two or three times as well. I remember, I think I owned it on cassette tape in the 1990s when I was at high school. And I remember I had, I had the single cassette of Just. And then I bought it on CD in about 2001. And then I might have bought it again on CD. Regardless, I've had it, I've, this is my at least my second copy on CD. Um, Track listing, Planet Telex, good song. That's an awesome starting song. Starts off with kind of like a, what's that, what would you call that, vibrato guitar? Da, 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 da. And then the Benz, great riff, very uh, kind of a straight ahead rock riff. High and Dry, a very um, big song for them. Fake Plastic Trees also, so two singles there and quite sim similar in that they're quite, um, I guess you'd say softer, acoustic-led songs. Um, Bones, that's a great song. It's got good lyrics, interesting lyrics. He's writing, it sounds like he's writing from the perspective of an, of an old person who's getting old and their bones are becoming sore and they're kind of um, talking about the difficulty of life and then he imagines back when he was a kid I used to fly like Peter Pan. They're kind of uh, in this crescendo part of the song. It's quite a affecting the way that they marry the lyric and the music at that part of the song. Um, nice Dream. Just, which was another single, which I said I had the, the cassette single of that, I remember. And that's got a great video. At least I haven't watched the video in years, but when I saw that when I was a teenager, I thought, wow. These guys are geniuses. <laughs> you know, when you're a teenager, anything that's a little bit inventive or different really kind of sticks with you, or it did with me. Now, if I went back and watched it, I'd, I'd probably think, oh, what's all the fuss about? But um, go watch that if you haven't. My Own Lung, that was also, I said, God, they had a lot of fucking singles off this album, didn't they? No, My Own Lung, my, sorry, My Iron Lung was an EP released as a single from the EP. The EP was between this and Pablo Honey, I think. Might be wrong on that. But they certainly had a, a video for that. Bulletproof, which I was, that's a song I could, um, for me, that's probably one of the the, uh, the songs that I, I least appreciate on this album. Black Star Sulk, and then Street Spirit, for a long time, that was one of my favorite songs ever now not so much 
it kind of um when I hear it now, it's quite drony. And I don't mean drony in the terms of drone genre, drone music. I mean as in I don't know how I want to say it, because it's it's certainly not a bad song. It's a great song. And like I said, it used to be one of my favorite songs of all time. But I don't know, maybe as you age, certain things that did appeal to you don't anymore. And there's something about that song that kind of, maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's too depressing. Is that, is that, the, is that the issue? And Tom York has talked about that song and the way he talks about it, he kind of feels it's quite a heavy song as in heavy on him that when he sings it, he says he kind of, he doesn't know where it came from. Yeah, I can't actually remember exactly what he said, but I, when I really liked that song, I, re I remember I read everything I'd find about it. And um, yeah, there's a few quotes by him kind of saying how he feels that the song is kind of, um, for him, it's a, it, it's quite a, a affecting song to sing and that he, he can't understand how the, the, the audience can deal with it because... But sometimes Tom York says things, and I don't know if he means what he says. Um, so a little bit munched there. There's the band there. Three, two, three years on from uh, Pablo Honey. Same lineup, of course. And this is the first album they worked with Nigel Godridge. So just... Uh, it's the artistic uh, choice for this lyrics they use the little sketches and that's something that they did also in uh okay computer now this said hang on what the hawk this is here produced by john lecky but mixing by sean slade paul q cole Dury, john lecky and radiohead black star produced by radiohead with nigel godridge so i was was i wrong Okay, so I sorry, so I'm I'm I was mistaken. I thought he did the entirety of his album. It sounds like he only did one song. Anyway, okay, and it's dedicated to the late Bill Hicks, comedian, American comedian, who also had Tool's album Anima, um, dedicated to him. His 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 image adorned the inside liner notes or booklet of that album god damn it so there's the bends then they really took a step up they um okay computer was where they really differentiated themselves from just another kind of indie-ish rock band and as soon as this came out you know, sometimes it's albums are recognized in hindsight as, as classic albums. But I remember, I have a, a quite a vivid memory of sitting in a hairdresser's while my, one of my friends was getting his hair cut. He had long hair. This is when we were like 17. And it, was t it took like two hours for him to get his hair cut. <laughs> it was for, for free because his mate was a, a, a trainee hairdresser. And... um. So he could get his hair cut for free. So I was waiting with it for him. I don't even know why I was. But anyway, they had uh, music magazines in the waiting room. And one of the music magazines they had was Q. If you remember Q, which was subsequently gone out of business, but was a pretty big and uh, respected British music monthly magazine. Not like the you know, NME, I think, was, was more weekly. But... Um, Q was monthly and it was, you know, the British music media is, I think, more established and more respected than the, than the American music media, or at least it was then and in print. You know, Rolling Stone, I guess, yeah, Rolling Stone was much more broad, wasn't it? It didn't just focus on music, it like went to politics and literature and other things, whereas Q focused almost exclusively on music. Anyway, in that, so this was in 1998 that I was in the hair salon and uh, this had been, this was released the year before in 97 and they were calling that album the greatest album of all time. They had like a light of the 100 greatest albums of all time, you know, of 
of all time. So the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and, you know, whatever else. And they put this at number one in 90, the year after it was released. That is pretty, it takes some balls to do that for the magazine. Because, you know, you could very easily in a couple, five years later, where the album kind of um, fizzled and the band didn't do anything after, you could quite easily say, well, that was a really stupid choice. But I think in hindsight, That's, that was a big call, but also a call that they could even defend now. Um, I don't know if I'd say it's the greatest album of all time. That's a bit much, but it is certainly a great album. A 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 album. As much for the music itself as, the as like I said, their evolution and the way that it pushed other bands because so many bands were influenced by by this album but so many bands were influenced by the bends as well weren't they so you, but anyway it, every every song on this album i like some more than others and to be honest some of the uh singles i've heard probably too much but airbag is such a great starter to the album and it's a song that made me play bass guitar the bass line on that, it's not like an anything amazing, like uh, difficult or, or it, it's just, I don't know, it stuck out to me. The way it kind of weaves in and out of the song, it's not going, it's not, you know, a typical bass line goes from the start to the finish, but it kind of, that starts off with um, process electric guitar and drums. And it's kind of got these sleigh bells as well, which, gives it a strange feeling. And then the drums come in, which was almost like a, a drum machine beat. And then the more organic drum sound comes in. And then he comes in with his vocal. In the next world. And then the bass kind of just, and then stops. And it does that throughout. Kind of, I was, when I was young, I was like, I couldn't, I was interested in why, where he chose to place the bass line and where he chose not to play bass i don't know it's just it, it i love it <laughs> that's all i can say and it made me want to play bass guitar i i did i bought a bass guitar and played i was never very good but um i play bass guitar as a as a young man and that song greatly influenced me paranoid android awesome Subterranean Homesick Alien, great. Exit Music for a Film, which was used for the Romeo and Juliet soundtrack, great. Let Down, beautiful. Karma Police, probably my least liked song on the album, but still it was a good song. It's a, it was one of the singles. Electioneering, great guitar sound. Climbing Up the Walls, amazing. He wrote that about working in a mental hospital, like a psychiatric hospital, and the sounds of people like scream he was like i think he was an orderly or a cleaner and he would be cleaning the, the halls and he would hear like people screaming climbing up the walls you know it's like a phrase to mean kind of beside yourself um lucky good which were they uh, oh, sorry no surprises i just skipped that it was their other single and again probably the along with karma police the song that i would listen to least but still a, a, a brilliant song lucky they use that on a uh the War Child uh, benefit album, which was to for kids in Kosovo or Bosnia Herzegovina, I can't remember which one. Somewhere in the Balkans, um, they some British bands made a album with the proceeds going to fund children in those war torn areas. And Radiohead used the word uh, used the song "Lucky," and "The Tourist," a, a great finishing song. It is a absolutely brilliant album and now that i'm going through the track listing 10 out of 10 um so much has been written and said about it so i don't think there's much i can add to it i have today new this is just the second hand album so i didn't bring it out so i have today today's a brilliant album and it's such such a sea change but also for me personally up until that you know for my teenage years, up until about, you know, 2000, which is when Kid A came out, I listened to pretty straight ahead music, alternative rock, 
metal. You know, if you ask me in, in the year 1999, your top five favorite bands, I'd probably say Metallica, Korn, <laughs> yeah, Korn, the new metal band, um, Soundgarden, um, maybe Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin for a bit of classic, The Beatles, um, maybe Nirvana. So yeah, pretty, you know, the, the, those bands, as amazing as all those bands are, and I, I love all of them still, um, they, they write songs in a fairly traditional manner, don't they? Verse, chorus, verse, solo. Today, and Amnesiac, for me, were al albums that use a completely new style of songwriting where it didn't have this traditional structure. And for me, that was like, probably for other people, people who knew, knew more about music, for them, that was like, well, they're, they're copying such and such or these German prog rock bands from the 70s. Or, but for me, it was like, it really opened my mind to new music and new ways of doing things. I, the idea that be able to write a, write a song and it doesn't have a chorus or um, they didn't even use guitars for a lot of the songs. It was a very electronic bass and it was, so I won't talk about today because I don't have it here. I've got it new and I don't want to, you know, try not to put new CDs in this too much because that kind of def defeats the purpose. But Amnesiac, I, I owned this three times. This is the third copy I own. I bought this secondhand in Korea for 8,001, which is about $8. So this is, I assume, yes, this is the Korean issuing, but it's exactly the same as the, um, the, the normal one. The case is broken. God damn it. Um, here's a CD. For me, this is the, and for Radiohead too, this was considered to be a companion. I think they're meant to be like a double album. They, you know, they've recently released the Kid Amnesiac. The, they put them together. I think last year they released that. And I think it was meant to be a double album, Kid A and Amnesiac together. And you can certainly hear how they go together. But because they were released separately, for me, they have a different feeling and mood. Um, I prefer Kid A, but Amnesiac is still an excellent album. Some interesting artwork throughout the booklet. There's that little character who you see pop up from time to time in their albums. Uh, you see there on that first page, it says, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, which was a book by what, Edward Gibbon. And I've heard that uh, Paranoid Android was about that. They That song is their account of the of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Don't know if that's true. And if you listen to the lyrics, uh, Gucci, Little Piggy, and stuff like that, I, I don't hear any uh, direct references to the Roman Empire, but packed like sardines in a crushed tin. Starts off with like a um, very tinny drum machine sound. Where's that? Oh, that's up there. Uh, Pyramid Song, that's a beautiful song. Very haunting. Piano. Jumped in the river, that one. Push, push pull, pull revolving doors. That's just kind of electronic song, sound, uh, electronic song. You and Whose Army. That was about the Labour Party, apparently. I might be wrong. Knives out. You know, it is as I go through this, it's that's it is a brilliant album. It yeah. Such a great band. <laughs> Such a fucking great band. Uh, Hail to the Thief, 2003. This was when they were quite political. This was uh, in response to the George W. Bush's bellicose behavior towards uh, Iraq or in Afghanistan in the um, years after 9-11. Good song. Oh, sorry, good album. I don't think as good as the, as the previous three, but still a good album. Um, Sail to the Moon is beautiful. Mix My Toast, this is a, is a cool song. Got a good electronic song, uh, sound. What else do I like? Was it, what's the one with the claps? I think that's We Suck Young Blood. There There was a single, and that was a good song as well. Uh, I got the second hand for a couple of dollars, and the condition's fine. Then they had 
uh, in Rainbows, which I own the physical copy of. I downloaded it because I released it online and you could pay whatever you wanted. But then I, I, a few years after I bought it uh, new, the physical copy, and that's a great album. King of Limbs, I don't own that. And that's because I've never come across it, new or secondhand. I'm sure you could order it online or whatever, but I've never come across it. King of Limbs is a patchy album for me. It has some beautiful songs in it, specifically Codex, but it has also some some uh, music out there that's a bit, I don't know, never here nor there for me. And then their last album up until now, Moonshape Pool. I got this second hand for $4, I remember, and that's got it's very good condition for a, for a card, you know, uh, non-plastic casing. It's actually in very good condition. So I was... This is a good album, um, especially the, the single Daydreaming. That's a beautiful song. And the video for that is one of my favorite Radiohead videos. He's walking around different doors. And um, yeah, I, I don't want to explain it because it goes on too long, but it's, it's a, a beautiful song and an amazing video. Also really like the song Present Tense interesting drum beat true love waits is a song that they um they had written year i think they wrote that in the pre-ok computer period maybe it was in the kid a period but anyway it would they never released it i think it was on a, tr a live album but they finally released it on this album so you can see there i talk a lot more about the early albums because especially ok computer kid a and amnesiac those three albums are a big part of my life and can, I consider them to be classic albums. Radiohead is one of the best mainstream bands, you know, bands that you would hear on the radio and, you know, talked about in the music media. I think one of the best mainstream bands of the last 30 years. The way that they, they've reinvented their sound, they've always pushed themselves, they haven't stuck, they could have easily stuck to the, to the formula of Benz or Pablo Honey, but they didn't. Tom York is a genius. His solo stuff, I think, is genius as well. The other guys are amazing as well. I don't know how much, who writes what. I've never really checked into that, but I think Johnny Greenwood is a, a, quite a big part of it as well. But anyway, Radiohead, brilliant band. 